Hello everyone, I'm Brian from Eakins Solutions and this is an introduction to the nifty dog bone add-in for Fusion 360. And before I get into describing the, the features of the add-in itself, I wanted to spend a, a minute and describe what a dog bone is for those of you that are, are maybe new to CNC. And we'll look at it with this uh, simple assembly. I have this green part with a kind of a pocket slot cut out of it and then this yellow block that fits into it. So, so that's okay. But now we want to manufacture that with CNC and particularly this green block, I need to cut this pocket in it. All right, so here's that green block uh, brought into the manufacturer workspace and I've added the toolpath. And you can see the, the toolpath has these nice sharp corners like the block does. And uh, let's look at a simulation of that. So the tools following the tool path, but you see I end up with these rounded corners because the tool is round. So it moves, it makes a nice sharp movement in the corner, but because the tool is round, that's the shape of the corner. So I can't create sharp internal cuts except on the bottom because the, the tool is flat on the bottom. So that corner is sharp, but these corners that's in the, the same direction as the tool are always going to be rounded. Right, and here we are back to our, our original assembly and so I don't after the manufacturing I don't really have the sharp corners that I had originally designed but I've got these rounded corners and my yellow block no longer fits in because there's interference as it moves into the corner and so there are two ways to solve this is one I could round the corners of the yellow block and that would be fine or I can remove more material into this corner so that the yellow block can fit and completely clear out the corner. And dog bones is a solution to the second one where I want to remove more material in the corner to completely clear it out. And typically using the same same tool, same size of tool that I used for the rest of the operation. All right now let's look at how the nifty dog bone add-in helps to solve that problem of removing that extra material in the corner that uh, the standard toolpath doesn't remove. And when you install Nifty Dog Bone, you'll end up with two new commands in the Modify menu. And if it's a command you end up using a lot, you can do this with any Fusion command. You can click on these uh, three, button, three dots and choose Pin to Toolbar, and then that will place it up in the main toolbar so it's easier to access. But when I run the command, um, Here's the dialog, and we'll go over all of these settings in more detail in a second. But just uh, to show by default, I can select this body, and there it creates uh, the dog bone. And uh, I'll go ahead and accept that. And now you can see that the material has been removed. This is the size of the tool that's being used to cut out the, the pocket. And now I have made enough room for that block to completely fit without any interference. All right, now that we've looked at what a dog bone is, let's look at a more practical example of how to use them and particularly how to use the, the add-in and the features that it has. And so this model that you're looking at on the screen is, is a contraption called a, a sit and reach and is used for measuring the flexibility of a person. Uh, but it, it's a good example of uh, where dog bones uh, would be needed. And so I'm just going to turn off uh, a couple of the parts here that we don't need. And this model is put together. It's joined with uh, tabs and slots. So these tabs, when I cut those with CNC, are going to have the little radius in these corners. And all of the slots will end up with, with rounded corners too, just what we talked about before, cutting with the round tool. So we need dog bones in those areas for these parts to be able to fit together. So let's look at, at the add-in and how we can use it to do that. And so first let's look at all the features in the dialog. And the first is we have a, an option for the selection type. 
and I can select a body, I can select an upper face, or I can select edges. And I'll show spe specific examples of those in a minute. Um, next, I specify the diameter of the tool. So this, this is the size of the tool that you'll be using to cut, and will define the, the size of the dog bone. Uh, there's this setting to add some additional size to that dog bone. So the dog bone we're going to create is point will actually be 0.251. So it just adds it to the tool diameter. And this is used because we're working with computers. And computers aren't exactly precise with floating point or numbers that have a decimal point. And so if I have a, a value that's supposed to be 0.25 and another value that's supposed to be 0.25, and then I ask the computer, are these equal? There's a good chance that they won't be. And internally, it's because one of them is actually 0.25000001, and the other one's 0.24999999. And so comparing these floating point numbers to see if they're equal just uh, isn't a good idea inside a computer. And this works around that by creating a dog bone that's slightly bigger than we need. So now when the CNC machine, or the, the software to create the, the tool paths, looks at this model and looks to see if a .25 cutter can fit into this 2.25 area, it, it'll decide it can. All right, the next setting is the type of dog bone that we want to create. And there's corner, minimal corner, long, long side, and a long, short side. And I'll demonstrate those in just a second. And let's look at what's in the advanced. Is uh, this little picture demonstrating uh, the, a dog bone. And then once I create the dog bone, I end up with this little gap that's visible. And uh, so this is the size based on the current settings that I have it, when the corner is 90 degrees. And uh, then this corner angle range, so as, as uh, the add-in is looking at corners that can have a dog bone, you can define what angle those two faces can be that join that edge and have it be valid for a dog bone. And then whether I want to preview the results or not. So we have yes to, to do a preview. So let, let's see it in action. So I pick this, this top body, and here we preview is on, so it immediately shows me what to expect when it will create the dog bone. And so here we have this corner dog bone, so it's removed this extra material, so there's no interference between those two parts. And let's look at some of the other options. So I could do a minimal corner, and so now the preview is updated to show us that. And with a minimal corner, it doesn't remove all the material. There, there is some interference. So this little corner is buried in the other, other part. And this idea of a minimal dog bone is defined on this Fab Lab makerspace in, in Denmark. And they came up with this idea of it's okay to have a little bit of interference. And that way the gap is, is smaller and the interference is, is small enough that you can just force the parts together. So that, that's an option, is to use this minimal dog bone. And you can specify in the dialog how much interference you want to allow. And then it will show you with that what the visible gap is. So you can reduce the visible gap pretty significantly by having a little bit of inter interference. Right. And then another option is along the long side. So that dog bone size is probably a little bit too big for that, so I can change it down to an eighth and the the preview and it instantly updates to show me what to expect. So here's a dog bone along the long side and or I can do it along the short side. Maybe there we go back to a quarter inch size tool. And here you get an idea of where the name dog bone came from, too. So it, it kind of has the shape of a bone that you would feed to a dog. Right. So I want to use a corner dog bone. And in the body setting, I can go ahead and, and select multiple bodies. 
and it's creating the dog bone preview for for everything so I can see what's going to happen and when I pick OK it uh, creates the actual dog bone. All right. And that shows up in the timeline as the, this node and I could choose to rename it or I could delete the whole thing so I could delete it they're all gone I'll go ahead and undo that so we can keep them All right. I can also update an existing dog bone um, if I make changes to the model so here we have this model with with that dog bone where we've created dog bone feature on all the bodies and now I want to make uh, some changes And uh, this is going to position where those tabs are. So I want this to be uh, one inch and two inches. And you can see now my dog bones are still where they were, but so they're not correct. So I've modified the model and the dog bones are wrong. But that's what the, this second command is update dog bones. And I click on that and then it recomputes and uh, fixes all of the dog bones based on the current geometry. And hopefully in the future when uh, Fusion adds some additional functionality into the programming interface, uh, this, this could be automatic just like all the other uh, Fusion features are. But now it's uh, kind of a, a semi-automatic process. So when you make changes to the model that would affect the dog bones, uh, you need to pick the uh, update dog bones command uh, to force the update. Here's an, another example where we can look at uh, a couple of the other features of the add-in. So this is a, a bookcase that I designed and it's held together with the, the slots and tabs and and so I need dog bones in it but I'm going to use one of the other styles in this case. So we'll do dog bone. And I'm going to use a smaller cutter. And I want to go along the long side. And I'm going to do that for the, the shelf too. So these backs and the shelves. So it's added, or it's previewing this dog bones for all of those. And I'll go ahead and accept that. And by using that style of dog bone in this case, they're completely hidden. So they get they get covered up because they're they're in the direction that the other board will will hide them. In these uh, side panels, I don't want dog bones everywhere. So if I pick the body option, of course it'll create, it'll find all of the edges that can have dog bones and will create the dog bone there. But I don't want dog bones everywhere. And let me sh show you why is because let me, here's the more finished version of this and some of these boards are going to be rounded over with a router and so I'll have radius there and when I cut this this side piece out with the with the CNC I'll automatically get this rounded corner just from the tool and that's what I want in this case so I, I don't want a dog bone in this corner but I need do need a dog bone in this corner and this corner because that's where the tab needs to go. It's, it's, it's a tab that's fitting into this slot, so I need dog bones so they, they can fit. And so in this case, I need to use one of the other options. <clears throat> and I'll just slide these. Well, I'll just do it on one. So I'll do create a dog bone, and here I want to create a 
using an edge. So I don't want it on this edge, but I do want it on this edge. So I just pick the edge, edges that I want to add a dog bone to. I don't want it on that. I do want it here, and I want it here, and here, and here, and here, and here. And then I want it on each of these. And now that can fit in. And again, th those get hidden. And so now let's look at, at one other example. And so here I've got a board. So if I use the regular dog bone, go back to a larger size and use the body and I pick this, it's going to assume that, again, that it's a panel kind of part. And so it would assume that I'm going to cut it from this orientation. And those are the dog bones that could get created. But if I have some other features, maybe I'm, I have something where I can orient this board standing up and cut these, these mortises into it using CNC, then uh, I need another cutting direction. So instead of using body, I want to use face in this case. And so I'm going to select a face that represents an upper face from, from the NC standpoint. So it's pointed in the, in the Z direction of the, N, of the CNC system. And so I just pick this face, and now it's looking for edges that I can machine and that need a dog bone from that orientation. And then it leaves these others alone. You can install a trial version of this add-in at econsolutions.com by going to Apps, uh, Nifty Dog Bone for Fusion 360, and then there's two links, uh, one installer for Windows and one installer for Mac. And the link is also in the description below. Thank you for watching.